Good afternoon. Here is another session with Dr. Donald Abrams. And today the topic is food and nutrition. So good afternoon, Dr. Abrams. Let's start with what Hippocrates said. Let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. So what type of diet do you typically recommend for your patients? Very important question because dietary issues are actually the number one cause of both morbidity and mortality in the United States today, surpassing high blood pressure, tobacco use, and not including high body mass index. So the diet I recommend is organic, plant-based, antioxidant-rich, anti-inflammatory, real, and whole foods. So starting back to front, I say whole foods, not to support Jeff Bezos, who certainly doesn't need my support, but because I see a lot of patients who say, I have cancer, I'm gonna juice everything or I have cancer, I'm gonna sprinkle broccoli powder in a smoothie. I think it's always better to eat whole foods. I say real foods after having read the book Metabolical by my friend and colleague, Robert Lustig, the pediatric endocrinologist at UCSF who fights the war on sugar. In this book, he points out that he believes the deterioration of our health as a nation over the past 50 years can be blamed on our overconsumption of processed and ultra processed foods. Hence, I say eat real food. Inflammation when you cut yourself or when you have surgery, when it heals, gets red, hot, tender, and swollen. That's inflammation, part of normal healing. But when that goes on inside of us without provocation, it leads to degenerative diseases of aging, dementia, heart disease, and cancer. And there's much that we can do by what we eat and what we don't eat to impact inflammation. Oxygen is two molecules linked together. That's what we breathe. That's how we live. But when those oxygen molecules separate, they create so-called free radicals or reactive oxygen species, which knock into our DNA, causing damage, leading to aging or cancer. Antioxidants take those free radicals out of circulation so they don't do damage. It turns out most foods that are rich in antioxidants are plants. Animal products are not a great source of antioxidants. That's why I say the diet should be plant-based. I don't think you need to be vegetarian or vegan or raw, but you should have at least five to nine servings or three and a half to four cups of fruits and vegetables each day, more vegetables than fruits. And as much as possible, they should all be organic. And that's not just to avoid herbicides, pesticides, and fertilizers, which are chemicals that we don't need in our body, because a plant that's grown outdoors organically needs to fight to protect itself from other plants, birds and insects, and the sunshine. And the only way a plant knows how to fight is by making chemicals. Turns out those chemicals that the plant makes are the ones that benefit us. So if we're going to let food be our medicine and medicine food, organic is more potent than conventional. Thank you very much, Dr. Abrams. Uh, can you get a little bit more specific on, you know, the specific types of foods people should incorporate into their diet. Sure. So I'm a big fan of cruciferous vegetables. Flowers grow in the shape of a crucifix. So broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts jump to mind, but there are also cruciferous roots, radish, and green leafies, cabbage, kale, collard green, bok choy, and arugula. These all contain a chemical so potent at reducing the risk of cancer that we started to look at it as chemotherapy. And these vegetables also contain something that changes a woman's estrogen from the type that fuels estrogen receptor positive cancers to the type that doesn't. So I believe we can never eat enough cruciferous vegetables. And I eat broccoli, tofu, and rice for breakfast. My other breakfast is mochi, which is just pounded brown rice. I puff it up in the oven, smear almond butter, and put a sweet potato on top of it. Because orange yellow vegetables are also good for you. Sweet potatoes, carrots, squash. I mentioned tofu. People are confused about soy. Soy is good for you as long as it's organic, non-GMO, and a whole soy food. Soybean, soy milk, tofu, tempeh, and miso, and not soy cheese, soy turkey, or soy hot dogs. Those are just heavily processed foods. And soy foods are good for women with estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. Fruit should be heavily pigmented, so the berries are all good. Blueberry, blackberry, raspberry really should be organic uh, because they're like sponges for toxins. Season with ginger, garlic, onions, and turmeric. Turmeric, very potent anti-inflammatory and may have some anti-cancer activity. 
The Mediterranean spices are also good, basil, thyme, rosemary, and oregano. Grains, whole grains are best. Brown rice is better than white rice, but if you like white rice, jasmine and basmati are good, and millet and quinoa are also good grains. Green tea, second only to cruciferous vegetables in the potency of its cancer-fighting chemicals. So tea is the name of the beverage brewed from the tea leaf or the Chinese camellia, the camellia sinensis. And it's graded on how oxidized the leaf is before the beverage is brewed. White, green, oolong, black, or poo air. And the only two with the cancer-fighting chemicals are white and green. For animal products, I like deep cold water fish, salmon, black cod, albacore tuna, herring, mackerel, and sardines. Those are the ones richest in the omega-3 fatty acids. Other seafood. food are good as well. A any non-seafood uh, animal products that you recommend? So chicken and eggs are actually the most inflammation-promoting foods out there, not only because of what we feed them, so they make fat rich in omega-6 fatty acids, which promote inflammation, but they themselves are a rich source of arachnidonic acid, the precursor to prostaglandins, the chemical mediators of inflammation. So poultry, which I eat, should be organic. Eggs, which I don't eat, should be organic omega-3. Eggs are linked with a number of malignancies. And in an article written by Walter Willett, Harvard's best nutrition clinician on milk, he lists the uh, all-cause mortality associated with protein sources. And the dotted line at zero for reference is dairy, and below it is plants, poultry, and fish, and above it is red meat, eggs, and off-the-chart processed meats. So the average American eats 300 eggs a year, and they're just not really a good food. Okay. So while we are talking about what not to eat, can you elaborate further on what are typical foods common in our American diet that we should absolutely avoid? Yeah, so processed meats, as I mentioned, are considered a class one carcinogen by the World Health Organization. Uh, salami, bologna, hot dog, sausage, ham, bacon, anything you put on a pizza. Personally, I don't believe beef or pork are ever going to be clean, and the only red meat I'll eat is lamb, because I picture it roaming the hills of Sonoma or New Zealand and not penned up like beef and pork. And I'll eat lamb maybe once a week or three times a month. I stay pretty much vegan until dinner time, and that's when I eat animals. Another animal product I'm not particularly fond of is dairy. There is no other animal that drinks another species' milk. But no other animal drives a car or goes to college either, so that's not a very good argument. But no animal drinks milk after they've been weaned. And by the age of three or four, we lose the ability to digest the sugars and the proteins in dairy. Make a big deal about fat, low fat, no fat, 2%. It's not the fat. If you want a dairy product, butter or ghee is probably best because it's mainly fat. We talk about lactose intolerance as if it's a disease or a disorder when in fact it's the norm. And the ability to digest lactose is actually a genetic mutation on the second chromosome found mainly in Scandinavians who needed to digest reindeer milk in times of freeze. Otherwise, the rest of us are mostly in lactose intolerant and don't know until we stop. So people then always say, well, what about yogurt? So yogurt or kefir, the sugars and the proteins have been altered by the bacteria. So if you need a dairy product, butter or ghee or yogurt or kefir, as long as they're not artificially flavored, artificially colored and with added sugar. Sugar is the number one no. And that means refined sugar, all the other nicknames for sugar, as well as sugary beverages, which include fruit juice. In Australia, they rank food in the supermarket for the consumer. And they recently dropped orange juice from five stars to two stars, ranking it below diet cola, which I never would recommend that anybody drink. So sugar, processed meats, eggs, a lot of red meat, and refined carbohydrates. I see so many patients say, I have cancer, I'm going to eliminate carbohydrates. Well, fruits, vegetables, refined grains are all carbohydrates, and those are good complex carbohydrates. When we talk about white flour, white pasta, uh, white sugar, all of those refined carbohydrates are not good for us and promote obesity and metabolic syndrome and some cancer as well. Thank you very much, Dr. Abrams. This was another uh, very educational 
uh, conversation today, and we look forward to continuing our topics uh, in our next session. Thank you very much.